Hey everyone, the Prophecy Dungeon is the high-end PvE activity for Season of Arrivals. In this video, I'm going to show you all of the secret urns that you can find, plus all of the secret chests, plus give you a quick breakdown if you're still struggling with it and not able to complete it. This whole mechanic goes around the idea of killing knights. If you kill the knights when you're in the shadows, you make dark modes. If you're in the light, you make light modes. So not very difficult. To find the first urn, what you're gonna do is before you even go into the drifter's portal, you're gonna turn around, go up to this edge here, crawl up the little ramp, go where this ice is. You might have to jump up a little bit and you'll go into this dark area and you'll pick up your first urn. It's hard to see from a distance, but just keep moving until you see the collect loot icon. After that, go through the portal. Immediately after teleporting into the next area, turn right around. You will see a rock in the back room in an area where there is a pond. Go all the way behind the rock and you'll find your second urn. You won't see it here on screen, but it is here behind the rock. Urn number three, before you jump up, after the first opening the door encounter involving the light and the dark motes, instead of jumping up, you're going to keep going down all the way through this tunnel. You're going to see a lot of debris, a lot of broken rocks until you come to these large globes. You're going to go over to the third one and in between the third and the fourth globe over in some rocks, there will be the third urn. Immediately before the first encounter, go up the ramp and instead of jumping on the area where the encounter begins, you're going to turn to your right and you're going to see four round doors with ledges on them. Keep moving all the way to the final door and look down to the rock beneath you. There will be the fourth urn right there. For the actual first encounter, it is very much a repetition of the first area where you make giant light and dark motes and then deposit them where you see them. Once you get four motes of different colors, you'll be able to do damage to the bosses. If you're struggling with this encounter with your team, an easy way to do this is to bring a bubble and swords. What you could do is pop a bubble nearly right on the boss and you'll be able to shred him very quickly. We were actually able to do it without a bubble and I actually died partway through the actual damage phase and my teammates were still able to destroy the boss be careful not to fail your bubble however as that will cause you to die after the first boss encounter you're going to enter the heaven or hell spawn area you're going to turn around and look for one of the pillars back behind now it's easy to lose track because these pillars are behind there but what i would do is make sure you're at the spawn to right around and look for these areas and these pillars here once you come right next to the area that has a red light, look for this ridge that you can see right here on screen. Look behind that pillar and you'll be able to pick it up. Again, follow the path that you saw on screen immediately as you spawn in. Next, we're going to show you where the first secret chest is in this dungeon. Using the spawn point again as a reference, you're going to turn slightly to the right and move forward. There's going to be a giant dune right in front of you. Go ahead and keep moving forward there. I'm aiming sort of at that orangish red light and going to that area. That is actually the Clovis Bray area of the Heaven or Hell section. And what you're going to do is before you get there, there is going to be a structure just immediately to the left over a dune. What you're going to look for is you're going to look for some yellow dust on the snow or the sand, whatever it is in that location. But again, use that as a reference point. If you ever get lost, just turn around and look for the spawn location again to reference where you need to go. There's going to be a small hole that you'll be able to go through and the chest will be there at the end of the tunnel. Before you enter the next section, which is called the hexahedron, or some people describe it as the gravity room, you're going to see these steps here leading to that. Again, you'll have to kill all the enemies before that room can light up. You're going to immediately go to the left from that staircase. You're going to look for those pillars again. There is a pillar right in front of you there. You're going to go to the third pillar to the left. So there's the second one in front of me right here. Go to the third pillar and your next urn will be right underneath that. 
The next urn will be in the room where the hexahedron encounter starts. Do not start the encounter. Instead, what you want to do is look up to the top left. There is a pillar sticking out that looks gold. What you want to do is follow the path here on screen so you can reach that final urn. There's a little bit of crazy jumping you need to do, but as long as you're being safe, this should work for all classes. You're gonna use this box here in the middle as a reference point to kind of orient yourself and you'll be able to pick up the urn from there. The next encounter is very straightforward. What you wanna do is look for where Toland is on one of the sides of the room. What you wanna do then is collect five moats, which will then coalesce into a giant moat, which you'll use to dunk on the side he is on. If he is underneath a white pillar, you need to use a light moat. If he's underneath a black pillar, you need to use a dark moat. If Toland is on the ceiling, it doesn't matter where you dunk it. As long as you're using the right color, it will rotate it. As soon as that happens, go into the center and rinse and repeat until you get to the final room with two giant taken bosses. Kill them and you'll proceed to the next area. Immediately after the hexahedron encounter, pick up the chest and use it as a reference. To your left, you should see some stairs, and over to the right, you should see uh, a giant bright light. If you look up to the top left where I was aiming, you will see kind of a blue eyeball. That is one of the mystery eyeballs that we are waiting for an exotic quest on. Follow the path here that you see on screen to orient yourself. There is a path underneath here that you can crawl underneath and use to jump up and get up to where you need to go. Again, use this box here in the center to get where you need to be. Go over to this platform. You'll see the giant blue eyeball and up above there, upside down, will be the next urn that you need to pick up. You will have to jump up to pick it up. I would recommend using a Titan or a Warlock for this so you can stay in the air for just an extra second or two. After the gravity room encounter, you'll go back into the heaven slash hell area. If you explore around the area enough, you will find floating emissaries around locations scattered throughout the map. My teammates and I were able to find a couple of these different emissary whisperers throughout here, but unfortunately for some reason, we were not able to progress them on our triumph. They did not count. So it seems like these are either bugged or they are maybe not supposed to progress at this time. Maybe it's part of a different quest. However, you're going to get five messages, one for each of the planets that's going in the DCV, the Destiny Content Vault. There's gonna be one for Titan, Mercury, Io, and Mars. So as soon as that quest progresses, I'll make sure that you know about that. The next urn is going to be near the start of the Ribbon Road area. What you're gonna do is look at the skybox here. You are going to jump down to the ribbon that starts off the ribbon road area. Instead of going to the left where the path leads you, you are instead going to go to the right. Climb up the ribbons as high as you can go and off to your right, you're gonna see a pyramid shaped platform. Go ahead and jump over to that ledge and you will be able to pick up your next urn. The next urn is probably one of the hardest to find because it's hidden in the Ribbon Road. Immediately after jumping down from the start of the Ribbon Road area, go ahead and follow the path that you see here on screen. I'd recommend not boosting a whole lot when you're on your Sparrow when you were doing this, or if you feel safer about it, you can run. You do need to be careful because there are snipers and booping mechanics throughout this entire encounter, so make sure you're being aware of your spaces and locations. The best way I can describe the pyramid that you're going to is one where the road goes all the way through it. There aren't any different ledges or anything else like that, but you need to find stairs that look that they go to the right hand side. Again, just follow the path that you see here on screen. If you feel like you're gonna fall off the road, what you can easily do is just hop off your sparrow for a second, jump back up onto the ribbon road, and then get your sparrow out anew and go down. Especially on these ledges here where you're going off long edges, if you're not comfortable with sparrowing or you're not sure where to go, just take your time and you will be able to find the final urn. You are going to need to go out past the actual pyramid itself and go out onto one of those ledges. Just follow the path that you see here on screen.
The next secret chest in here is going to be located continuing down the ribbon road. You are going to see two pylons next to the road like that. Immediately go off to your right hand side and you will see a hole. Go and continue the path down and across this area here. And what you will find is a chest at the end of that tunnel system. Go ahead and pick up your loot and move on. The 11th urn is going to be immediately after the ribbon road right before the boss room. Look for the symbol of the nine, follow the stairs up to the right hand side and over in the corner on some of the snow or sand will be the 11th urn. Finally, the 12th urn will be in the boss room before you start the encounter. You wanna jump up here on this ledge Go ahead and look at the Saturn-like looking object right here. Jump on top of that, turn around and look for the black circle right there. You're gonna go ahead and jump up on top of that. Then jump up on top of the next sphere, turn around immediately behind you. You will see a ledge up over in that area and there will be your final urn. You can jump up there with a Titan if you have Lion Rampants, but I would recommend following that path for all other classes. That is the final urn, and you will get the Earn It Triumph in your inventory once you collect that. Finally, you are at the final boss encounter. What you need to do is continue the process of dunking on sides using the lights as your guide. There are going to be three shades around the room that are going to be shooting at you constantly. Continue to kill the knights, pick up the moats to make a giant moat and dunk them in. Once you clear one of the three sides of the room, an ogre will spawn in its place. You want to knock them out and take out all of the rest of the enemies. I recommend running at least a bubble here, a healing rift, or at least invisible hunter. If you're trying to complete this, it's not very difficult. If you have a solid team that communicates very well, make sure that you don't accidentally pick up your teammates moats. Once you clear all three sides, you will be able to go into the damage phase or the boss. Once you are on your way down to the damage area where you can actually damage the boss, you'll see a Kel shade in front of you. There's gonna be a bunch of different platforms that you're going to need to maneuver and navigate. You will notice that dark entropy is starting to build up. If you are too far away from the boss, dark entropy will build up. If you are getting hit by one of his shades, he'll actually teleport you back to the beginning of the map. You wanna make sure you keep your distance, but not too far so that you make sure that you don't die to his weapons or that you get hit from the shade. If you build up dark entropy up to times 10, you will die and your teammates will have to pick you up. However, your ghost will be back at the beginning or the middle of the map. As you progress further, your ghost is actually going to progress further up as well. So if you get hit, don't freak out. Try and move forward as quickly as possible or watch out for your teammates. Rinse and repeat those phases until you kill the boss. That is your complete guide on all of the hidden pieces inside of the dungeon, plus a quick tutorial for those folks who maybe are struggling with it. I hope you liked something in this video, and if you did, a positive rating is greatly appreciated. Hit the subscribe button for more Destiny 2 content. Also check out my live streams on YouTube and twitch.tv slash manodester777, where I help people out with tons of PvE content like Whisper of the Worm, Outbreak Perfected, dungeons like this, raids, and more. Join our Discord, the link for that is down below. Good hunting guardians, I'll see you next time in the universe of destiny.